Are you a millionaire from trading now? Yes. I make more of my trading than I do in my medical practice. You do? Damn. Do you see yourself marrying another trader? And how many years have you been trading now? Uh, it's been like 13, 14 years. What advice would you give to traders watching this video? There's only one. There's only one that matters. What's up, everyone? We're here at Las Vegas for Traders for a Cost conference. I'm going to be asking a lot of millionaire traders for advice. Here are some very big traders who you might be have been following for a long time. So make sure to stick around and remember to smash the like button and subscribe. Let's go. What's your name and what kind of trader are you? Uh, my name is Ricky. I love this microphone. It's a Lamborghini. If you Lamborghini didn't know. It's also my favorite color, Lamborghini. <laughs> oh. Uh, I am a, I trade everything. I trade small caps, large caps. I trade things that move. Liquidity mm. and volume are my precursors and like my requirements. Mm -hmm. And if uh, it meets those, I trade it. Uh, what were you doing before you found trading? Oh, that's a good question actually. Yeah. I was running a business with a business partner. Okay. Uh, we did online retail. We had a, we had warehouses in uh, Vancouver, uh, oh. Santa Cruz. San Diego and Hawaii. Actually, and one in Kansas City. Are you a millionaire from trading? To me, and like, I talk to a lot of traders like Eduardo and other people, like, mm -hmm. the money is like a byproduct of mm. just being a good person and like yeah. being somebody that likes to be the best at what you do, period. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it has nothing to do with um, a fascination about money. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually think if you have a fascination about money, it's probably going to hinder you. Yeah. It's probably going to make you a less good trader. Unfortunately, I think that's what happens to a lot of new traders. They start, they think they're gonna make a lot of money really quick, and unfortunately, that's how they fail. Like, yeah. you, all you, you have to have a, a, a passion about the process. And mm. I know people hear this all the time, and they go, yeah. oh, it's a cliche, you, the process. I hear all about the process. You know why you hear about the process? Because it's the most important thing. Yeah. If you are not fascinated about the process, then get, go find somewhere else to go. Because, mm. like, trading isn't for you. Okay, well, like, actually, uh, you, have to, you, like, just, put it in front of you, me. you touched on a really important topic, <laughs> what you just said. You said, no one trade is going to yeah. make or break you. Right. And I want you to expand on that because, like, I agree with you. Yeah. I think you should never look at a single trade as your defining moment. Mm -hmm. I think one trade can break you, definitely. Oh, it could. Yeah, it can break you, but it's never going to make you. Yeah, because Wait. if it's all due from luck, it's not repeatable. You're not going to get lucky three, four times in a row. Yeah. Well, and I would say that like if you let one trade break you, mm -hmm. you, you were missing out on something very important that yeah. is risk management. Yeah, right? like, for sure. No trade should be able to break you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't manage your risk, guess what? The, the market's like the ocean. Yeah. Like it doesn't care how big your boat is. Yeah. It's like the whole brand. It's like Lamborghini money. Like, like I'm kind of mocking that lifestyle of traders doing that. So that's why it's like a running joke on my channel. I like that. Yeah. I like that. He just took my Lamborghini. What's your name and what kind of trader are you? Uh, my, my name is Anand Sangvi. Everybody calls me Luchi. And I trade everything. Who what knows? What were you doing before you found trading? Um... I was always in the secondary market, so I was always flipping something mm -hmm. that had some demand. Okay. And there was limited supply, so that was always my game. Oh, uh, okay. You, Before trading. Okay. Yeah. And how many years have you been trading now? Uh, it's been like 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyone who is struggling right now that say they are like around break even but trying to break through that ceiling to become profitable, what would, advice would you give them? There's only one. There's only one that matters. Don't give up. Have you ever given up on trading before? Of course, but I shouldn't have. I have to get back, you know, mm -hmm. you have to do what you have to do to get back. Sometimes you have to take a couple steps back mm -hmm. to move forward. So mm -hmm. keep going, don't quit. Do you think trading is gambling, in your opinion? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Okay. It's I like exactly. how honest you are about this. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. We're in Vegas. Absolutely. Do you think money buys happiness? Like with your success, with all the experience you have, trading the market, you know, wins and losses overall, you see money fly in and fly out so fast. Do you think it buys happiness or fulfillment? I don't think it buys happiness. I think it gives you choices. And when you have more choices and you have the freedom to make those choices, but I don't think money itself 
is the thing that'll that'll make you happy. But if you yourself aren't happy being who you are and doing what you do, it doesn't matter how much you have. What's your name and what kind of trader are you? Uh, I'm Lucas. I'm uh, the short bear <laughs> on uh, Twitter for people that know me. Uh, I'm an investor nowadays. I okay. used to be in small caps. Uh, just moving to uh, bigger things, I guess. Bigger and taller things. What's the advice you would give to traders watching this video? Uh, being less random, uh, trying to focus on data. So where do you have an actual edge? Uh, getting away from trading emotionally, which is basically trading for money. What do you think of the year 2022 and what it means for the traders? Do you think uh, it's a good year for trading? It sucks. <laughs> That that's about sucks. sums it up. Yeah, a lot of people who got lucky in 2020, they lost it all this year, unfortunately. Like if you didn't have all the experience a lot of prior. Lost a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to grind through it and just uh, yeah, be prepared and times will come where you can go crazy, but let's just be prepared for it. That's all. If you're not, you're just going to lose. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. What's your name and what kind of trader are you? I'm Brian Lee, and I trade small uh, small caps, shorting them. What were you doing before you found trading? I used to be a professional gamer. Oh my god. What made you give up on that career and to switch to trading instead? So I've been doing it for about a decade, and it's a team game. So I was like having trouble um, succeeding, and I wanted to see... I want to see if I can prove myself in a game where, you know, it's just you and yourself. Mm. So I felt I was putting in way more, you know, effort than my teammates a lot of time. I was the leader, but uh, nowadays, like, I feel really vindicated that I've been able to trade and succeed in that. Mm. How would you describe trading and has it, how has it changed your life? Trading is one of those things that you have to commit a lot of time to. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can do overnight. I think it takes three or four years, just like any degree. Yeah. It's a skill that needs to be built, but um, it's unlike any other profession in the sense that you know, you can't compare it to a nine-to-five job. What you put in is what you're going to get out of it every single time, and the rewards are, you know, beyond anything I could have imagined before. I feel like it changed my life and everyone that I care about in a, in a significant way. So what advice would you give to traders watching this video? I would say be patient with yourself. Understand, like I said, three or four years. You really have to commit yourself to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something to half-ass. I would say that... You need to put your full energy into this and it will pay out um, appropriately depending on, you know, if you really treat this like a business and you want to be a professional, just don't even bother if you're going to trade amateur. Are you a millionaire from trading now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your name and what kind of trader are you? Rez and I trade everything. Everything like small caps, small caps, everything. Large, small cap, large caps, crypto, options, all of it. Oh my god, this guy does trade it. everything. Um, are you mainly more long biased or short biased? 50 50. Are you a millionaire from trading? Yes. Oh my god, do you have a Lamborghini yet? <laughs> no, I build my cars, I don't buy them. Oh, you're not a real millionaire until you have a Lamborghini. How would you describe your trading career in three words? Blood, sweat, and tears. And with emphasis on the tears part. A lot, yeah, there's a lot of tears. <laughs> what advice will you give to our fellow traders? Oof. Uh, I'll give two. One, don't give up. And two, risk management. That's number one. That's the only thing that will keep you in the game. As long as you survive for the next round, that's all that matters. How has trading transformed your life? What was your life before and now after? Uh, it's shown me who I am, basically. Like um, A lot of stuff I didn't know about myself the trading brought out mm -hmm. so like you know how I deal with stress pain that kind of stuff so it, it kind of like made me look in the mirror and deal with uh, what I have but that's that's basically how trading's like affected my life do you think it made you a better person and more emotionally stable or more volatile <laughs> way, way more volatile <laughs> way more volatile, way more volatile. <laughs> not, not stable at all way more volatile <laughs> okay but I mean you have to learn to deal with it right that's mm -hmm. part of the trading so yeah yeah uh, what were you doing before trading uh, I'm still doing it, so I'm in biotech engineering as well. So I do like full-time that and full-time trading all at the same time. Do you, do you think making more money means more happiness? It's not a trick question. Uh, having more money gives you freedom to do the stuff that you want to do. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like we don't look at our P&Ls, we're not looking at money and stuff. Like money comes and goes. It's the time that you never get back. So I think that's more important thing. Yeah, shout out to Vancouver, Canada. 
604. 604. Yeah. That's literally that's part of my tag. Oh. <laughs> so four for us. So, 604 yeah. red. A few other guys should know out there, but. Uh, what's your name and what kind of trader are you? My name is Eduardo Briseño and I'm. Uh, I recycle shares a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a day trader. Okay. Yeah. Are you predominantly long biased or short biased? I'm price driven, like 40, 60 maybe. Are you a millionaire from trading? Uh, I just, I'm about 20K to be a millionaire. He's so. a millionaire. <laughs> Let's round it up. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, yeah. appreciate it. What were you doing before you found trading? Oh, uh, well. A lot of things. I was an electrical engineer. Then I went to like my pursuit of the entrepreneur kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and then I went for an uh, uh, insurance broker for a while. Oh, wow. Is there anything you cannot do? Uh, a lot of things <laughs> that I cannot do. That's why I'm trading. Uh, what advice would you give to fellow traders watching this video? Well, first, to start slow and don't pursue the money pursue the process. I think that's the best thing. And start small. Like you don't mm -hmm. have to you don't have to go big at the first year and a half maybe. Mm -hmm. So start small. How has trading changed your life? Completely. Like I used to live in Venezuela for example. I came here to the States and mm -hmm. you know five years ago I was you know struggling a lot. And now you know I get to be with you. You know? This is really cool. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your name and what kind of trader are you? I'm Nick Bordignon. I'm a small cap short seller. Are you mostly long biased or short biased? Short biased. Only short biased. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to long yet. Um, are you a millionaire from trading? I don't want to say my net worth, but I'm doing okay. I'm happy. That means he is, and he has a ton of Lamborghinis at home. <laughs> what advice would you give to our fellow traders watching this? That's an easy one. Uh, learn how to lose. If you can lose, you'll be okay. You can't lose, just give up and put the money in my pocket right now. In three words, how would you describe your trading career? Long, painful, relief. How has trading changed your life, for better or for worse? Honestly, for, for better, for better big time because it, it allows you to see who you really are and like it opens you up to like this whole new person that you didn't know existed. It's, it's an amazing experience and like I said, it's hard. It's really, really hard and it's long but it's, it's the best thing you'll ever do, especially if you come out on the other side without giving up. Do you think trading is gambling? No, it's a game of probability, uh, psychology, and uh, I guess odds falls into, into that category, but, but yeah. What were you doing before you found trading? So I'm a physician, I have my own medical practice. I'm an anesthesiologist, I now am an oh interventional God. pain management physician. That's my business manager there. Okay. But yes, I uh, I enjoy trading more than I do my medical practice. Oh my god! Well, so you're you're a doctor. Sometimes. Your parents might be so proud of you. Your Asian parents, they must be yeah. like, oh, you you have a real career, making a respectful career income, and and now you go into trading. What 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 do they think about this? So my, your parents are only proud of you if you do what they want you to do. Yeah. And what they want you to do is live the picture perfect life, right? Yeah. Right. So so. I don't know if they're proud of me. I, I believe they are, but the truth is, is you do what you want to do. You find your passion, and when you when you explore, when you discover your passion, and when you execute on it, and it's rewarding. That's when you find like your sense of happiness and peace. Mm. What kind of advice would you give to our fellow traders watching this video? Risk management. Know when to cut. We all make mistakes, but. Remember that you can always trade another day. Just cut and walk. Really wise words. Risk management, everyone. Remember this. How has trading changed your life? I make more of my trading than I do in my medical practice. You do? Damn. My medical practice is, you know, it's a good practice, but... Yeah. Um, so, it's about freedom, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. so it's about freedom and wanting to live the way you want to live, not have to apply with certain restrictions, certain guidelines, and, and, and find something that makes you satisfied. I think it's the important thing. Finally, we have a female trader here. What's your name and what do you do? Um, my name is Catherine. I'm not actually a trader, but I am the wife of a very successful one who is a speaker and a sponsor here at Trader Star Golf. Um, I am a housewife. <laughs> what is it like being married to someone who's a full-time trader? Um, 
it's pretty good because he's successful. But I know that um, it wasn't easy starting out, especially the first couple years of us dating. Uh, when he wasn't having success, when he wasn't finding success, he would spend a lot of time investing into trading with not much payout. But right. then eventually, now he's gotten to a point where he's consistent, things are a lot better for us mm. now. So things have been pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So is it safe to say that he couldn't have gotten here without your support? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I know that's funny, but it's actually true. And yeah. he, would, he would also say this without me holding a gun to his head. Because mm -hmm. I did support him for a long time before mm -hmm. when he was... Um, because he didn't work. I let yeah. him focus learning trading full-time mm -hmm. um, and he really like honored that he like really hunkered down he stayed really disciplined he didn't mm -hmm. really like like mess around like oh wife giving me free reign to do whatever I right. want. he actually took it really really seriously so mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that too oh. it, it worked out because you know we both kind of worked in our own way to make yeah. It work. yeah well I'm happy for you guys thank you thank you yeah. so much do you see yourself Marrying another trader or finding no. another trader? No. No? You don't even to? I don't know. I think having one crazy in a relationship is enough. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. No. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this new video series when I ask traders questions and advice in real life. So make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. I have more interview questions here. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out for more fun trading advice and questions. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'm the Humble Trader here in Las Vegas and I'll see you guys next time.